Hello everybody, I'm here again with another example of a statically indeterminant uh, beam. So as you could see, um, we have a simply supported beam with an additional uh, support right in the middle at point C. And uh, that makes the beam statically indeterminate. So if you look at the free body diagram of this guy, we have a reaction AY here, we have a reaction BY here, and then we have a reaction CY here. Again, we cannot use the equation in the X direction because there is no force in the X direction. Therefore, we are, we are left with two equations, some of the forces in Y equal to zero, and some of the moment equal to zero. So remember, statically indeterminate means that we have too many unknowns. Here we have three unknowns, right? But we have only two equations. So that makes it statically indeterminate. Okay, so how do we use uh, deflection uh, and in particular uh, the uh, superposition method to solve this problem? So what I did like the last problem that I showed you with the cantilever beam, uh, I basically removed this uh, uh, roller support here and then replace it by its reaction C sub Y here in the middle. So then I said, what would be this beam? This beam actually could be divided into two beams, one and two, which I forgot to put the two here. So one just with the uh, uh, uniform load, uh, simply supported the uniform load, and one with just the uh, contribution of this concentrated load, Cy. And each one is going to deflect uh, differently. This guy would deflect downward, and this guy would deflect upward because of the load pointing up. So if you go ahead and add point C, find the deflection, which happens to be the maximum deflection in both cases. So this is YC1 due to the uniform load, and this is YC2 due to the uh, concentrated load. And now I have the tables again here, the charts here for you. And so for example, for the one with the distributed load, look, the maximum deflection is right here. In fact, this is the one that we actually derived, if I'm not wrong, in one of the uh, videos that we were using the integration method. If you go back to one of those videos, you'll see how we did this actually. We went through getting the equation of the moment and then integrate twice and using the appropriate boundary condition to get the maximum deflection. So here we go. So this is actually downward. So we go with the negative 5WL to the power for over 384EI. So before actually I talk about this, let me mention that just like the last problem you saw, we know that the deflection is going to be zero. In other words, how would this beam deflect? It would deflect like this. So the de deflection must be zero at point C. So that's what I said here. And then what is YC? YC is the combination of these two. Basically, these two must be equal to one another. Let's put it that way. Because the sum has to be zero, right? So... YC1 comes from the 5WL to the power for over 384EI, and that's exactly the same beam that you see here. And the YC2 due to the concentrated load CY just replace this P to C sub Y. So it becomes C sub Y L cube over 48EI positive. Solve for C sub Y, so 48 actually goes to 384 eight times, so it becomes just 58. L cube cancels with this one, you just get an L. So simple. Now, uh, by symmetry, because AY must be equal to BY, uh, we could just use symmetry. So using symmetry, of course, you don't have to do it this way. You could just use your sum of the forces in Y equals zero and sum of the moment equals zero. But in any case, just be uh, efficient since uh, BY must be equal to C, uh, a, a, I'm sorry, AY must be equal to BY. We say, okay, uh, we have a WL going down, right? And then we have 58WL due to the, um, the C sub Y. The difference is what? Is uh, 3 eighths of WL. So this has to be divided evenly between these two. Therefore, AY must be equal to BY, equal one half of that. So it should be 3 16th of WL. Here we go. I mean, you could, you're welcome to use the uh, moment equation also to just prove that 
that's what you're going to get. But it's, it's a good idea to just use the symmetry. Okay, guys, so this should uh, take care of the topic of uh, statically indeterminate beams using superposition. Remember that there are other methods such as integration, energy method, uh, and using the uh, area under the uh, moment diagram. But we are not going to talk about those. We just want to show you the most efficient way, which is the um, basically superposition and using these charts here. Again, thank you for watching and listening. And pretty soon we'll start the lecture on chapter 12, I believe, uh, which would be stress transformation. So stay tuned. Thank you and see you soon.